This incredible organ that you're taking a look at right here, the heart, is one of the most tireless organs in the human body. It pounds out over 100,000 beats every single day, which equates to more than 2.5 billion beats in an average lifetime, all while pumping around 2,000 gallons of blood through an extensive network of blood vessels. However, I would argue that the most incredible characteristic of the heart is its ability to adapt and get stronger with exercise. We push it to its limits during intense workouts, and yet it bounces back stronger and ready for the next challenge. So today, we're gonna to show you exactly what's happening inside the heart when it gets stronger and adapts to exercise. And some of the numbers that we're gonna mention about how much blood an athletic heart can pump compared to an untrained heart is going to be ridiculous. This is definitely going to be full of all sorts of cardiac anatomical awesomeness. So let's do this. So let's start by going over some key features of the heart that'll help us with our story of how the heart changes and adapts with exercise. Now, most of us have a pretty good idea that the heart is located within the center of the chest, posterior to the sternum, sometimes referred to as the breastbone and the apex pointing to the left. But the heart also sits within this awesome sac that you can see me touching with my fingers here called the pericardium, sometimes referred to as the pericardial sac. And you can see we've made an incision, so we might as well open up the pericardial sac so you can see your little heart present inside. And what's really cool is when I lift it up, you can truly see how it sits in this sac. Now the pericardium will also secrete serous fluid onto the heart, and this will help lubricate the heart and reduce the friction while the heart is beating. The heart is also made up of three layers. The superficial layer is called the epicardium, the middle, thickest muscular layer is called the myocardium, and that's gonna be the layer that's most important to our story. And then the inside layer is referred to as the endocardium. On this particular heart, we haven't removed any of those layers, so you're looking at the epicardium, which is primarily made up of epithelial tissue and fatty tissue, and that fatty tissue is giving off that yellowy color. So to get to the myocardium, that thicker muscular layer, we'd have to remove the epicardium which is exactly what we've done on this particular heart. And so you are looking at the myocardium of the heart. And this is primarily made up of cardiac muscle fibers. These cardiac muscle fibers have strong similarities to like skeletal muscle fibers, which have the ability to shorten and contract and therefore produce force. And this myocardium is going to produce force in order to pump blood. The right ventricle we've opened up right here this is going to pump blood to the lungs, which are right next door, as you can see, the right lung here and the left lung there. The left ventricle we've also opened up over here, and the left ventricle is going to pump blood directly into the aorta, which is the largest artery in the human body the size of a garden hose. I mean, look at that thing. But once the left ventricle pumps blood into the aorta, that's going to distribute blood to the entire body. Now, you may have noticed there's a difference in the thickness of the right ventricular wall versus the left ventricular wall. Look how much thicker the left ventricle is. And that's normal and that's okay because the right ventricle just has to pump blood right next door to the lungs, whereas the left ventricle is going to pump blood to the entire body. And it's this left ventricle that we're gonna focus in on for our story for cardiac output or how exercise changes the heart. And for us to truly understand how the heart changes and adapts with exercise, we need to understand the concept of cardiac output. Cardiac output is the amount of blood that's pumped out of the heart. And this is usually measured in liters per minute. And we're not gonna go crazy with math here, but there's an equation for cardiac output. Cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. Now heart rate you're likely familiar with, it's the number of beats per minute. And like somebody could have a resting heart rate of 70 beats per minute. Stroke volume people are less familiar with, but stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped out of the left ventricle in this case with each beat. And so let's say we had somebody who had a resting heart rate of 70 beats per minute and a stroke volume of 70 milliliters. And so to find their cardiac output, we do 70 beats per minute times 70 milliliters, and that would give us 4,900 milliliters per minute or 4.9 liters per minute. And 4.9 liters per minute is about the average cardiac output for a female at rest, whereas males are about 5.5 liters per minute at rest. But let's say we took an individual who was untrained, they didn't exercise very much, but their heart was healthy, it didn't have any problems with it. And we took that untrained individual and we put them on a treadmill and we made them exercise as hard as they possibly could. 
We could measure their cardiac output at the peak of their exercise, and we'd see that it would be about 13 to 15 liters per minute, which is pretty good, right? So we went from a resting cardiac output of 5.5 all the way up to 15 potentially, so almost three times their resting cardiac output. But that 13 to 15 liters is nothing. If we took an elite athlete or an elite endurance athlete and measured their cardiac output at peak exercise, their cardiac output can be anywhere from 30 to 40 liters per minute. That's nuts. Talk about going from 5.5 liters at rest, being able to go up to 30 to 40 liters, that's quite the cardiac reserve. And even more incredible is to think, okay, if we have an untrained person and they can only get to 13 to 15 liters when they're working as hard as they can on the treadmill, and if some, compared to somebody who's trained, that is showing us that the heart has an incredible capacity to get stronger and adapt with consistent exercise. But what is actually happening within the myocardium when the heart gets stronger and adapts to exercise? Well, something that's interesting about the myocardium, again, it's made up of those cardiac muscle fibers. But those cardiac muscle fibers cannot divide. They can't copy themselves, they can't undergo mitosis. And we'll talk about why that's relevant to exercise adaptations in just a second. But I wanna first give you a little FYI or a clinical perspective of why that's so important. If you were to kill some of your cardiac muscle fibers, which unfortunately can happen during a myocardial infarction or a heart attack, if you kill some of those cardiac muscle fibers, you cannot replace them. And instead, those cardiac muscle fibers that died will get replaced with scar tissue, and scar tissue is not gonna provide the same functionality as cardiac muscle fibers, and so therefore, the pumping capacity of the heart will decrease after a heart attack. And again, that can vary depending on if it's a mild heart attack or a moderate or severe. And obviously in severe cases, sometimes people can die from those heart attacks. But coming back to exercise adaptations, if those cardiac muscle fibers cannot divide, what's happening then when the heart is getting bigger and stronger? Well, the muscle fibers, those cardiac muscle fibers that you do have just get larger. And you've likely heard the term hypertrophy before. And in cellular physiology, Hypertrophy just refers to the cell, or in this case, the muscle fiber, just getting larger. And in general, a larger cardiac muscle fiber is a stronger cardiac muscle fiber, which will therefore increase the pumping capacity of the heart and therefore the stroke volume. And there are multiple tests that you can do to test if your heart is getting stronger. Like you could do VO2 max tests in a lab, and that also will test other things besides just heart strength. You can even do lactate threshold tests. But one of the cheapest and free test that you can do to figure out if your heart is getting stronger is let's say your resting heart rate is 70 beats per minute. And then you decide to do high intensity interval training or you decide to train for like a half marathon or a marathon. And then six months down the road after that training, you notice that your resting heart rate is now 60 beats per minute. And what your heart is essentially telling you is now instead of 70 beats per minute to pump that same volume of blood, all I need now is 60 beats per minute. And I was watching this really cool podcast that was interviewing a, an Olympic athlete. And the podcast interviewer asked this Olympic athlete who was an endurance athlete, at his peak fitness, what was his resting heart rate? And his resting heart rate at his peak fitness was 27 beats per minute. That's nuts. That's quite the incredibly fit heart. But those cardiac muscle fibers don't just stop at getting larger and stronger. Exercise will also stimulate those cardiac muscle fibers to increase not only the size, but also the number of mitochondria. Now, you probably remember from like high school biology or a previous biology class that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It utilizes oxygen with either carbohydrates or fats to produce ATP. Because your cardiac muscle fibers, they need ATP, the energy currency of our cells, to produce these muscle contractions. And so the more ATP that can be produced with an increased number of mitochondria is just going to make the heart even more fit and increase its overall exercise capacity. Another adaptation that occurs with the heart is something called angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is a fancy pants way of saying the development of new blood vessels. You will increase the microvascularization, specifically increase the number of capillaries that are feeding this cardiac muscle tissue. And so now we're pairing more blood with more mitochondria, the more blood will increase the amount of oxygen and nutrients that can get delivered to those cardiac muscle fibers. And then those increased number of mitochondria can also utilize those resources to make more ATP. 
And on top of that, the cardiac muscle fibers are larger and stronger, and so they can pump with more force, increasing one's cardiac output and one's overall exercise capacity. One of my hopes with every video that we create is not only to excite you about the human body, but also to excite you to become a lifelong learner. And if you take a little bit of time each day to learn something new, over days, weeks, months, and years, you'll build an incredible base of knowledge. And to help you with this, I have something that you can try for free. And that is the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you to get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and even AI. Brilliant's lessons are designed to be uniquely effective as their first principles approach builds understanding from the ground up through problem solving and engaging hands-on exploration, which we can definitely relate to the hands-on experience in an anatomy lab. And all of this turns you into a better thinker and not just a memorizer. And of course, the science nerd in me is going to geek out about brilliant science courses, as these courses help you to make sense of our universe at every level, from the mechanics of simple machines all the way to the mind-bending physics of black holes. So to learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash IHA, or scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. Brilliant is also giving our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Thanks so much for watching and supporting our channel, and we'll see you in the next video.